Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. You just tuned into Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. Thank you so much for being on the show today. On my show, we talk about anything and everything related to real estate investing. And one of the topics that consistently gets a lot of questions and comments on my YouTube channel is the topic of reverse mortgages. For that particular reason, I did a little bit of research for you all and have found somebody who actually has a reverse mortgage or a very close relative in this case that has a reverse mortgage that kind of is sharing his story. So this is more like a case study today. I hope you can stay on. Today's show is not live. It has been pre-recorded as I am currently on a short trip to Germany and I will be back in about two weeks. So this show will be on rerun the following week as well. That would be the original run date of the show february the 22nd of 2023 and then the rerun for the show will be march 1st of 2023 so if you miss it today or part of it today you can catch it again next week and before i get started on this show i wanted to let everybody know that the viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of wruu its license holder, or its staff. Now, because I get a lot of feedback from you all from my YouTube channel, which, by the way, you can check out easily, it's just my name, Julia M. Spencer, on the topic of reverse mortgages. And I've done very few videos, actually, about reverse mortgages and only a couple of radio shows. I wanted to do a little bit more deep-down grassroots research on the topic and kind of try to get a feel of how are people actually satisfied with this particular product? And for that particular reason, I went on Facebook, some social media. Facebook is where I started and put my feelers out just basically to get some information about reverse mortgages. And specifically, I asked for people to reach out to me for this particular show that had gotten a reverse mortgage and wanted to share their story. And I didn't want to do a lot of commentary. I just wanted to hear the story and get the facts from the people that are actually using that particular product and not so much talk to the actual lenders that are offering the product and very obviously have a huge bias to get information out that's good about the product because they want to sell it and make some money. So I put my feelers out on about four different community groups on Facebook regarding reverse mortgages, I asked the question, is there anybody that knows some clients, some people that have gotten reverse mortgages that wants to talk to me for the show? And I got so much feedback. I got so many responses. And most of the responses were from lenders. In fact, I really didn't get a whole lot of response from anybody that has a reverse mortgage. A couple of people had mentioned it a little bit, but then they didn't contact me back when I asked them to be interviewed, except for one person so far. His name is Jason Rowe, and he's actually not the person that got the reverse mortgage, but his mother did. And he is taking care of his mother now. She's an elderly lady. He's located in Brisbane, Australia, actually. It's not even in the United States, but it's really the only person that reached out to me and wanted to share their story. And here is the interview without too much editing from me. I wanted you guys to get a picture of what it's actually like to have a reverse mortgage and then go out and do your own research and do some thinking and see if this is something you want to get into. And thank you so much for tuning in. Without further ado, let's get right to the interview. Well, tell us your story. What happened? Oh, look, I suppose I'll start with our story first. Um, basically, um, my partner's mother, so that's my mother-in-law. Um, so last year, um, well, actually started in 2020, died, they would basically claim the house and then any money owing after the sale of the house, they would actually take that out of her 
um, savings or anything else or out of the rest of the estate. Um, so in the early 2000s, that rule was changed in Australia. Now, I'm pretty sure in America that that rule was changed earlier in the piece. Mm-hmm. But now that you you can only owe to the value of the house. Um, so, yeah, so mum, because her loan was taken out prior to the legislation coming into Australia, she was in that section that they could basically take anything out of her estate. So, look, the sale went through, um, and look, I basically, they basically had a, um, a caveat over the house. Um, so basically the, um, they wouldn't release the house, like any loan that you take out, like a car loan, um, until the loan was paid out, um, at the point of sale, um, then they released the house to the new owner. Um, so yeah, so that was just the, uh, our sort of our path, but unfortunately now is that she needs to go into aged care, or she lives with us now. Um, she needs to sort of go into aged care, and she, there's no buffer there whatsoever. Um, I think um, look, I, I think the look, I can see the the good side of a reverse mortgage if you've got the ability to pay it back. It's like any loan. I think if I come to you and said, "Here's thirty thousand uh, dollars, no strings attached, you don't have to pay me back," I think you've got to go well. Hey, look, um, is there some alarm bells there? Do your homework. Have you exhausted all your financial avenues um, to take out the loan? Because in the background, this this loan will chew away any equity that you've got in your property. Um, yeah. And as I said, the higher it gets, the faster that it actually chews it up. Um, so, yeah, look, it's uh, that's sort of our our process of what we've done with Mum. But um, she was, you could see, I think she had a lot of regret. Um, that you know, when at the point of sale of the house, she realised that that fifty thousand dollars basically took away her whole property, the whole life, anything that she had. Um, I can I can see a reverse, like I can see the reverse mortgage just being a good thing if you've got the ability to pay it off, or basically, yeah, it's just, it's a bad it's a sad thing. But the longer that the, if you take a, if they take a reverse mortgage out, then the longer that they live, the better it is for the bank. Because that interest just keeps accruing and the equity just keeps getting chewed away. Um, right. And as I said, like, how many of us in the world actually uh, get to a point where we actually live and die in our own property? Um, you know, a lot of us have got to go into that aged care side at some stage. And I know here in Australia, when you have to pay three, four hundred thousand dollars up front just to get into an aged care facility, um, you know, most elderly people sort of use the equity in their property to to secure a position in that aged care facility. So, right. um, yeah, so it was just a bit of a shock for us, I suppose, last right. year to find out. Mm. What, I'm kind of curious to know, what was the interest rate on this loan? In, um, it? It, was, it was fixed for the first six years, and then after that it went to variable. I see. That's why it increased. That's why you're saying is like the longer it takes, the the higher the interest yes. rate went. It's just because the smart the way the market was. Because I wasn't quite understanding. So it was variable. It could have went down, but in your case, obviously it didn't. So. Well, you're uh, talking about a 15 year period. You're talking about a 15 year period, I suppose. The rate, the right. variable interest rates over a period of time. Um, and then, of course, as I said, the longer the loan, longer the equity keeps getting drawn down, or drawn out, um, then the higher the interest. Like if, you, if you've got, if your loan gets to a hundred thousand, um, and you're paying, you know, what three or four percent, um, you know, that that's that's a fair whack of money right. that's yeah. coming off. So yeah. especially for for a pensioner. Um, as I said, she was, I think, on um, the last statement that we looked at, and that was, well, last January, last year, that it was $1,200 a month that basically that she was paying that was coming off her equity on the property. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's every month, yep, that was mm-hmm. on her statements. And obviously they fluctuated because of the variable interest rates. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, look, as I said earlier, I think reverse mortgages have got their place. They certainly have. Right. I think that people, if if you look, if they're looking to do it, they need to, as I said, have you exhausted all your financial avenues? Like for mum, like if she had just went to her bank and said, hey, look, I want to buy a new car, they would have given her a personal loan and just taken money out of her pension each fortnight. Um, 
you know what I mean? They would have spread it out over five or six years for her to buy a car and take it a bit out of the pension. Um, you know, she's gone on a bit of a holiday. Um, if she went to the bank and, and maybe even asked for a personal loan, that they, they could have done that. I think um, if there's family involved, definitely discussions around the table need to be spoken about because I right. think really that that repercussion yep. down the track is that if I can no longer live, if I can no longer support myself and I do have to sell the property, um, how, okay. you know, yeah. And well, I think the biggest one is one, one of the ladies in her group actually did pay the loan back. Um, so she actually took the loan out, but then she actually made repayments. And, uh-huh. and the biggest thing, with this, like any loan, as you know, if you don't make a repayment, it just sits there and just grows and grows and grows. Right, and that's right. when you look at reverse mortgage, it's basically what it is. Right, right. And a lot of people don't realize that. And I've actually made video, I made two videos on my channel years ago where I basically just said, hey, here are a couple of things that you can do instead of a reverse mortgage. And I got so much hate for those videos just because people are like, and mostly from bankers. And they're like, well, you're just assuming people can make payments. But in the end, you're going to make payments anyways if they're coming out of your equity or out of your regular cash flow. And if it comes out of your equity, you pay, unfortunately, three or four times as much as you should have for the same thing. So I totally... Yeah, yeah. Sort of... Yeah, and and look at... Yeah, yeah. And and look, they're going to sell you a product because... Um, you know, honestly, if you had a look at mum's contract, and if I can find a picture of it, I should email it to you. Um, basically, at the front of the header, like on the top of the page, it says you do not need to make a repayment. On every page was on the top. You do not need to make a repayment. Right. So you've got a 70-year-old who's just been given $50,000 to go and buy a new car and go on holiday. But at the top of this contract, it says you do not need to make a repayment. Um, I just... Um, and of course, they, they don't want you to talk about it. They don't want they don't want people to sh- show you the bad side of it uh, and what can happen. And I, I've posted up on this page too that circumstances change. And I think if you're thinking about going to take out a reverse mortgage, you, if you've got no family and it's just you and you've got your own ha- house and you know you, you've got no, no heirs or anything to leave your house to, or you've got no kids that might have to come in and look after you down the track, or um, Look, yeah, look, it could be a good thing, but I think if you've got family involved um, that um, sort of have to pick up the pieces down the track, I think the decision needs to be made as a family. Um, right. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a hard, as I said, mum was a proud woman, um, I, and that was the thing, you know, and you could see how proud she was when, you know, basically we, when the house was sold and then she realised that, you know, that the the holiday and the car that she had that that we just sold for, you know, fifteen hundred bucks that we all we got a car, you know, the money we got a car for in fifteen years that had done about thirty thousand kilometers. Oh <laughs> right. uh, yeah, it's a brand new car, thirty thousand kilometers, we sold it for fifteen hundred bucks because that's you know um but you could just that she had tears in her eyes that she had regret. Um that knowing that yeah, that fifty thousand had basically equated. I think by the time we paid it out, it was uh, two hundred and two hundred and ten. I think I might have been just shy under two hundred and twelve thousand dollars in fifteen years. Went back to the little mortgage lender. Wow! Wow! Um, That's so such a basically... bad story. But thank you so much for sharing that. You mentioned something in the beginning about you actually had to pay to talk to somebody as a third party on her yes. behalf. Yes, well, in her in her clause, um, any third party that um, any third party correspondence or the approval um, in this contract was that they had to pay she had to pay six hundred dollars, um, and there was a whole list of other um, correspondence um, charges that would occur. Um, so basically, that the lender, um, the lender basically, that look they they know who they, they know their target audience. Right, and they, they don't want anyone else to. They want to make it extremely hard for anyone else to question or ask questions on their behalf. Um, so, if if they can sell a reverse mortgage to someone who's going to live twenty years, it's great. If they sell a reverse mortgage to someone who's going to live two years, well, then it's not good for them. 
Right. Sorry, does that make sense? Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand it. So, um, did you end up having to pay those $600, or did you just... Uh, yeah, we did. I did. Yep, I paid that in my pocket. Wow. Yeah, purely, wow. purely because I actually went to a we went to a solicitor and took the paperwork. And he said, well, basically, I can't even talk. I can't even, he goes, I can send them a letter, but they're not going to, they're not going to talk to me. Right, right. No, um, basically, the only way on this clause of this contract for any correspondence through this company was that we had to pay $600. And that way I could pick the phone up and have a talk with them over the phone and discuss the contract, discuss what was going on. Hey, mum's at a point in time where she can no longer look after herself. We've got to sell the property. Um, and we even went down the path of could we rent the property out? Um, basically, they said if mum leaves the house, if she leaves the property and rents the property out, well, then she has to start making repayments um, on the property. And, yeah, at that point in time, well, you know, it, it's, um, it wasn't... Uh, and they also had the opportunity, they had the option to foreclose on it and basically take the house and sell it um, from right. us. So you really... So once you... Once you like, you know, it's like when you take a car loan. You've got no control over your car whatsoever until you finish paying the loan off to right. pay it back. They hold that caveat over it. Um, it's no different with a reverse mortgage. Um, once you sign up for the reverse mortgage, they hold a caveat over that property until you pay the money back. Um, right. Once the money's paid back, well, then you own the property. You can do whatever you want with it. Right, um, right. So, yeah, it's... um. It, there's a lot more in the background that goes on that they don't want to tell you. They'll, they'll, they can, they, they fluff it up as a really, really great product and I can see that it can be. But unless you've got the ability to pay it back or at least pay, you know, a repayment back, um, right. it, it's just going to be the way. Right, right. And that's, that's so telling what you're saying is, and I have yet to find somebody who's been completely satisfied. I hear these stories from from the lenders themselves. Yet, yeah, we have clients that are super happy, and I'm like, okay, well, send them to me. I'll talk to them. But so far, nobody. People that come talk to me are people like yourself that had basically an elderly relative who uh, many years ago signed up for reverse and didn't really know what they're signing, and you have to basically deal with it now many years later. So uh, that's the kind of stuff I'd like to uncover and kind of help oh. help people to to not do. Right. Well, what's the the target audience? And when we sat there with Mum, she just completely was oblivious to what was going on. I think in the background that she sort of knew, mm-hmm. but I just think that, as I said, that whole proud woman. You know, if we had this conversation 10 years ago, um, things might have been a different kettle of fish. We, we probably would have said to her, or even, you know, even 15 years ago when she took the loan out originally, you know, we could have come up with options. We could have went through with the bank and said, hey, you want a new car? Let's go to the bank and see what finance options there are. Um, you want a new okay. car? Do you need, do you need a new car, mum? We could get a really good second hand one for you for, a, you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, and the, and the bank would, would loan because she had the equity in a property. The bank would give her a personal loan. And take it out of a pension over a period of time. Not, um, you know, I mean, it's just like a, they would have tailored something for her to get a new car. Um, you know, even that, you know, that conversation. Um, so I, I don't think at the point, and that's the thing, they sell it to the, well, you could, look, I don't know, you could call them vulnerable. I don't know. Um, it, it's a pitch that was put to a, a, a certain element of, of the elderly. Um, you know, and honestly, I know some of them are. You know, they are cash strapped. You know, they're a bit cash poor sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that, and that's when a reverse mortgage can come into play. But then on the other hand, they've got to really realise that they've got to pay at least some of it back, or they've got to make repayments. Otherwise, it's just going to absolutely chew away at any all their equity. And it's going to the longer it goes on, the the quicker it gets. Like um, right. I think mum's most of mum, mum most of mum's equity is gone in the last five years. So, wow. you know, the first, the first, the first, I think it was, I think she was on a fixed term for about, I can't remember how, I'll have to have a look at the contract. She was on a fixed term for a few, a few years, and then once the fixed come off, that went to the variable, and then the last five years, obviously, because the equity got up over that $100,000, it went extremely quick. Um, right. 
it was only twenty it was twenty thousand dollars a year basically. For yeah. It might have been more, actually it was yeah, five years, yeah, it'd be about that. Wow. So the, the yeah. last hundred thousand basically was, was calculated in about five years. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. That's more than most people pay in in anything, even rent some some places. And and the fact that the company actually went to a location where their target audience congregates and where they could have the most fits, that's kind of I find that almost a little bit uh intrusive. Um I don't know. Um, I think we'll see as I said, like they the regulations in Australia are only come into fact I think it was early two thousands, I think it was two thousand and two. No, it was later than that. It might have been two thousand and twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to double check on the top of my head. I'm pretty sure that they changed because what was happening, there was a lot of rogue lenders out there before that. And they would target the elderly and they would put a bid to these contracts. Um, it was, it wasn't like, um, but as I said, it was done through friends. So one of her friends got this, um, reverse mortgage and then she's come to Bowles and said, Hey girls, well, you know, I've got this mortgage on my property, you know, um, would you all like to be interested? You know, it's fantastic. It's this, it's that. Um, you know, so it was sold through word of mouth as well. So, and then mm-hmm. he's obviously come along and sold the product to the other ladies. Um, so, but back then, as I said, there was a lot of rogue lenders. Look, the, the legislation changed and, the, and it's a lot tighter now. But mm-hmm. the simple fact is that now that all they've tightened it up is that you, you, know, you can't owe any more than what the, the property's worth. Right, but right, right. Your, but, but your equity is going to be, they can, that, as I said, the longer that the loan goes for, right. the, the more and more of that equity of your property will be eroded. And the longer it drags on and the higher the, of the higher the, the amount owed is then the higher that the interest is calculated. Right. And right. then that, that erodes extremely quick at the end. Wow. Um, you know, if you start, if you start, yeah. Exponential is what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, it's basically, they almost uh, want to just finish you off at the end, more or less, to take the property. Well, as I said, look, well, it is. They they know they're selling a product. And as I said, it's a gamble for them. If, if, if the person that they sell the product to passes away within a couple of years, well, it's not a good, not a good investment for them. But if the, if they sell a product, like mum was 70, she's now 87, um, basically, the longer that they live, the better it is for the mortgager, for the lender, mm-hmm. because they know that this is going to continually erode, 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 and at the end of it, when either she passes away and it goes into the estate, um, then basically they can't sell the property until they get repaid. So they they, they basically take the house; it's gone, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. take away take away a chunk of the equity. Mm-hmm. Win win. <laughs> who, right. Who, who's, the only, who's the only one that wins out of all this? It's the banks. That's who wins. Of course it is. It's the lender. It's the right. lender. Yeah. Right. So I, thought, I just well, I'm yeah, really sorry needs... you had to deal with that. That that must have been a shock, a, a unpleasant surprise. Anyways, at such a late stage, and um, I, I, I applaud you for taking care of your mother. Now I tried to take care of mine for a year and. Uh, it was it was too much, so I I know exactly what that's like. Thank you for tuning in to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, one hundred seven point five FM, WRUU dot ORG. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. You're listening to an interview I had on February first, twenty twenty three, with a family member of an elderly lady that got a reverse mortgage. So this is a case study if you're just tuning in. If you have not listened to the whole interview, you can tune in again on March 1st, 2023 to listen to the interview again. And before we continue with this case study, with this interview, please listen to some of these announcements. I'll be right back after this. This portion of WRUU's programming is brought to you by listeners and by Sentient Bean. 
Sentient Bean has been serving fair trade coffee, thoughtfully sourced food, and other items to the community since 2001. They offer curbside pickup, delivery, and online ordering as well. They are open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily and are located at 13 East Park Avenue on the south side of Forsyth Park. More information can be found at sentientbean.com. Tune in to Way Left of the Dial every Monday afternoon here on WRUU from 4 to 6 p.m. for Music with an Edge with Tom. It's Way Left of the Dial every Monday afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. here on WRUULP 107.5 FM. Early Birds Preservation Walking Tour of the Landmark Historic District's East Side will take place on Saturdays, May 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th, starting at 8 a.m. and lasts about 100 minutes. The 2.3-mile early morning walk provide participants with a view of one of the oldest and most varied neighborhoods while learning about how historic preservation has revitalized downtown Savannah. While walk-ins are welcome, reservations are recommended. Tickets and more information can be found at www.davenporthousemuseum.org slash programs or call 912-236-8097. Springtime tea at the Davenport's will take place on Wednesdays and Thursdays, May 3rd, 10th to 11th, 17th to 18th, and 24th to 25th. The program begins at 5 p.m. and lasts 75 minutes. Guests will learn about tea traditions and experience early 19th century tea in the historic atmosphere of the Davenport House Museum. Tea will be served in a delightful interior room at the end of the program. Costumed interpreters will join guests for refreshments and conversation. Tickets and more information can be found at www.davenporthousemuseum.org slash programs or call 912-236-8097. This portion of WRUU's programming is brought to you by listeners and by the Savannah Music Festival. The 2023 Savannah Music Festival will run from March 21st through April 8th and will feature the Zurich Chamber Orchestra with Daniel Hope, the Emerson String Quartet, the Philip Dukes and Friends Chamber Music Series, the Dover String Quartet with Joseph Conyers, and more. More information and tickets can be found at www.savannahmusicfestival.org. What does it mean when we say that WRUU is a community radio station? It doesn't just mean that we invite the community to create programming, and it doesn't just mean that we are a voice for the community. It also means that we are counting on the community to keep us going. And you are the community. Almost all of our modest budget comes from small annual or monthly donations from listeners like you. You get to enjoy our community-focused programming because many others have stepped forward to do their part. Now do your part by joining our community of listener donors. Go to wruu.org right now and make a one-time or monthly donation. And thank you for supporting Savannah's community radio station, 107.5 FM. This is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Real Talk. This is Julia M. Spencer, and on today's show, we're talking to Jason Rowe. He is the son-in-law of an elderly lady that got a reverse mortgage, and we're basically talking to him about his story and his mother-in-law's story to find out how she fared with that particular product. We had a lot of questions on my YouTube channel and on my shows in the past, about reverse mortgages and I had promised you all to bring an actual case study from somebody that got a reverse mortgage and this is what I have done with this particular interview. So I hope you enjoy this. This interview was pre-recorded on February 1st of 2023. It will run today on February 22nd and also next week on March 1st. So here is the rest of the interview. I I Um, think... We're heading down that path. I think we're we're extremely we're extremely worried for her now. Um, she mm-hmm. had a stroke um, oh, a few years ago, and she's lose starting to lose a bit of mobility. So, look for us. She can get out of bed. She can go to the toilet. She can shower herself. She can make a cup of tea. 
Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, as as it goes on, she's getting frailer and frailer, and there will be a point in time where she's going to have to go into aged care. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking forward to that now um, because, as I said earlier, you know, I know I don't know what it's like in America as far as aged care goes, but mm-hmm. here to if you go into the public system, um, it, there's a huge weight, um, and mm-hmm. you could you don't have a you don't have a choice of where of aged care where you go to. Um, so basically, if she could end up in an aged care facility that's a hundred kilometres away from here. Wow. Right. So, and that's just a case of where there's a public spot available for her. So, but with, when you have, when you have the money to go behind you, like if you have a deposit, what you do is you've got a choice then. So, that it's normally anywhere between, oh, look, it depends on the aged care facility. It can be anywhere, say, from 250 to 350,000 dollars deposit. So, you have to pay that up front to the aged care facility and then it'll guarantee the client a spot. Um, and you can normally pick where you, where you, where you can put us, so we can actually have a closer to home. Um, oh. but, uh-huh. you know, and obviously, and obviously having that, um, you know, she's, she's got, after the sale of the house, she's basically got nothing. So, right. we now look at it going, well, we need to keep her at home as long as we can. We know that there's going to be a point in time where she is going to have to go into, into a facility, but, um, but now we've got no we've got no control of where she's actually going to end up um, if she does end up in the public system. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. which is a bit sad. So I suppose it's just she's got no more security there at all. I suppose for her her long term aged care is the word for it. Yeah, she basically just deleted her options with this reverse mortgage yes. just to get a car and a vacation. It's that's 100%. so tragic. I feel I feel the loss right here for you as well. That's just yeah, so unnecessary. Look, think, <laughs> so unnecessary. The biggest thing I'm upset about is for her. I think when we sat there and, and it actually just hit her and you could see her face, that was the hardest thing for me, was just seeing her face. And for something that was a decision, you know, look, we all make decisions in our lives that affect us greatly. We all do. Um, and I think um, seeing her and seeing the realization on her face um, when you know basically the sale of the of the property and then they've taken basically all of it, um, it it really sunk in and you could see it in her. Um, that was hard for me and that was hard for my uh, my partner mm-hmm. Melanie. So she um, yeah they uh, they both sat there and had a big cry. So it was just uh, that was extremely difficult for me. Um, but you know there's not much you can do about it. It's uh, it's done and dusted, so. Keep your head high and all the... <laughs> we are. Look, life goes on. I, I, I Let's really feel for you. I know exactly what situation you're in because I've, I've also been there. So thank you so much for sharing that story, though. That's going to be so helpful for so many people just to see that no, from a right, perspective. That's going to be that's really right, good. Julia. Yeah. No, that's fine. Look, I, I appreciate the call, and look, I, I'm I'm quite happy to, as I said, talk to you and put put our story forward. Look, it's um, it, yeah, it is. A, it's a pretty crappy one, but look, this two part of it is mum isn't alone. There's there's so many other people around the world that are probably in the same situation, and um, you know, I think it's just more about awareness. It's more about people um, just yeah, stop, think, talk to family. Do mm. I really need this? Um, how is it really going to affect my life? How's it going to affect my future? Um, mm. You know, I think the first port of call is, are there other options? Have I exhausted them all? Um, right. Can I make a repayment? Yeah, I'm happy to take a reverse mortgage, but can I make a repayment? Can I make some repayment on, on this loan? Um, right. Don't think that you're going to give, they're not going to give you money and, and not get anything back in return. Right, right, right. Well, this story will definitely help open a lot of people's eyes. So, we could maybe not help your mother, but there might be other people that we've prevented from making similar mistakes. So in that case, yes. I think we've, we've done a, the good deed for humanity here, I believe. So I'm I very so, Julia. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Look, and all the best with that, with everything. And, um, yeah, if we can look at, you can get my story across to, to people and, um, and just make people think about, you know, the decision that they're about to make or, or they're thinking about making. 
um, and get them to talk to, to people, talk to other people, talk to family. Um, you know, it, it's um, it's probably a, a crucial thing, and it is a huge, huge, huge decision that might seem simple at the time, and the salesman will sell it as a great thing. Um, but you know, there's as I said, you know, if I walked you up, if I walked up to you today and said, "Here's thirty thousand dollars, no strings attached. You don't have to pay me back." Would you um, would you be asking questions? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We should all be asking more questions for sure. So, anyway, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. All the best to your mom as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, she's she's awesome. She's a funny, she's an old English lady, loves a cup of tea, um, and uh, she's a a funny, funny lady. Uh, I enjoy being around her, actually. She, um, every day, uh, there's always a good laugh going on, so... You know, I think when you're 87, uh, if you can't get out of bed in the morning and have a laugh about something, there's, uh, and she certainly does that. So, yeah. That's anyway. awesome. Right. That's awesome. Okay. Good on you. Well, thank you so much. We'll be we'll be in touch. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Julia. Good on you. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. And you're just listening to Real Estate Real Talk with myself, Julia M. Spencer. This was an interview with myself and Jason Rowe. He is the son-in-law of an older lady that got a reverse mortgage about 15 years ago. He's located in Brisbane, Australia. And he is one of the people that came forward when I requested some information about reverse mortgages of actual clients that gotten reverse mortgages. It's a little bit of a case study today, so if you did not hear the whole interview, it will run again next week on March 1st, so please tune in again. Also, the show will be published on my YouTube channel. My name on YouTube is Julia M. Spencer, and also it will be published on the WRUU.org website if you missed it. If you have any questions or comments or you want to say something to Jason, please let me know. You can reach me at realestate at juliamspencer.com. And I wanted to let you know that the viewpoints expressed in the preceding program were not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. And thank you so much for tuning into Real Estate Real Talk. That brings me to the end of my show. Please continue tuning in, leaving me comments. Thank you so much for being a fan, and I hope you have an awesome, great Wednesday afternoon. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Bye-bye, everyone.
for your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliamspencer.com.